Hi guys, Arisa Dia here, and I'm back with another book nook. It's been a while since I've done the last book nook, but it's probably because I don't read a whole lot. Um, at least not for fun. I read a ton because I'm an English major and creative writing major. But I don't read for fun or read things that I typically want to review. But this book I thought was special. It's one that I've wanted to do a book nook on for quite a while. And the reason I'm doing it now is because earlier on this week, in, on Tuesday, I believe, um, the sequel of the book was released and I'm super excited for the sequel. I've been waiting for it for two, three years now. Um, I'm actually kind of sad I haven't actually even pre-ordered the book because I was going to actually go to the book release party. Um, but then the day that it happened was the day that I have three out of my four classes and I live just far enough away from where it was being held that I like could not make it there without missing all of my classes and probably spending the night. So I did not end up doing that unfortunately which is sad because I wanted to meet the author of the book and also one of my other favorite authors was going to be there guest starring and I was like no because I love them both so much. Um, so missed opportunities but um, now I have to like go and buy the book which I will do once I have money. So might be a while but I'm still excited for it. But anyways the book is Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. I've reviewed Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell and before. I think it was my first or second book nook on this channel. And this book is special because if you've read Fangirl, the main character Kath is writing a fan fiction also called Carry On. And it involves characters called Simon Snow and Baz. And um, this is essentially those exact same characters, but it's not supposed to be the fan fiction she's writing. It is the same characters in the same universe as the fan fiction, but it's their own story. So I thought that was really interesting. It's a great way to monopolize not only on the idea, but like the fact that like Rainbow Rowell had so much fun writing just like these short, like what are just supposed to be like fan fiction snippets enough that she like not only made one book, but like even just wrote a second book for it. I thought that was really, really cool. And that's something that like I really enjoy and really like, but this book is really really good. It's quite thick. It is, I believe, much thicker than Fangirl. Um, and you can probably see that like I have like a bookmark hanging in there. Uh, I've actually read this book like five times. The bookmark's just marking my favorite chapter, which if you've read the book, it's probably your favorite chapter. It's chapter 61. Not gonna give away spoilers, but it's just by far best chapter. I love it so much. Um, I even know like my favorite line from the book, but I can't read it because it's definitely like major spoilers, but it's in chapter 61 and to me it is peak perfection of like what could be said in this situation. Um, but this book is really great. It's about, um, it's kind of like Harry Potter in which there's like the real world and then there's like a magic world in like England but it's different in the fact that like the way that the concept of magic is set up is entirely different um like for example the way that they say spells they're not just like made up words or like kind of like latin based words each spell is based off of like a phrase that's like really popular and depending on like the time of like the time period and stuff because like phrases go in and out of style it like changes like the effect or like the power um of like the spells so like some spells get lost if like that phrase gets lost and stuff and so i thought that was just like a really cool concept and especially because they are able to like say the phrase as just like the normal phrase but then they're able to also say it with magic and so it's like that differentiating thing um 
part of me is actually kind of happy I don't live in this world because I am known for saying very cliched lines or like very popular phrases a lot and knowing me I'd be the person who would like accidentally say it wrong and just have it like become a spell or something and just be like whoops but I just think it's like really cool and like it's a very like innovative and new way to like really think about like magic and like how it's used and like even like the government and stuff in this book is very interesting and like the dynamics of like there are these old families who like have come from magic and like they don't like the current like kind of like democracy I guess I couldn't think of the word democracy that's kind of like happening and like the mage who's in charge like the old families don't really like him and just like kind of like the battle between them but the story is about Simon Snow who is essentially the chosen one as all good kind of like hero questing journey books have and he is roommates with Baz who um goes missing at the very beginning and while they're roommates they were put together through a like special ceremony and they actually hate each other like they are actively trying to kill each other and this book takes place in i believe their last year of the school that they're in and essentially like you're going through like their last year so you're, they're like recounting all the times that they've tried killing each other you're not like experiencing it it's more of like flashback ways that it's been told but essentially he goes missing and so Simon starts like freaking out and is like why is he missing and stuff like that and so they end up finding each other and they start to go on a quest to find out who killed Baz's mother as well as Simon is also trying to defeat the insidious humdrum who is essentially like the main antagonist like who keeps like um he essentially is like creating these holes where like magic ceases to exist within those holes so everybody in the magical world is like freaking out over the humdrum because essentially wherever the humdrum is and is creating these holes becomes like a magic dead spot where magic just does not work and as the magic community they're rightly so freaking out because they can't do magic in those areas so simon is trying to stop the humdrum while also trying to help Baz find his mom so well not find his mom his mom did, but trying to find who killed her and so they end up like kind of working together and it's just this really interesting dynamic especially to see them go from like enemies who were literally like trying to actively kill each other to like them working together but what I think I love about this book the most and I'm not gonna give away spoilers but there is a romance aspect of it and the romance aspect is very great um it is very LGBTQ friendly um so I thought that was very very interesting for like not only a book in this like modern day time period because like yeah that's a theme that's coming up more and more in modern day books but I still feel like it's not something that's still like openly done but it's also just like interesting to see like the dynamic of it within like this magical kind of like community in England so I thought that was really really cool and interesting but I definitely really like this book um, like I've already said like the world was really good the characterization is really good it's actually interesting the way that it was written because it's actually told from different characters perspectives so most of the time it's told from either Baz's perspective or Simon's perspective but occasionally it will go into like some of their friends like Penelope or Agatha or other characters like Baz's aunt at like a couple of times and so it's like 
very interesting to see like most of the time you're just working with two different characters perspectives but then when it's necessary to like learn something or find something out you get these like little sneak peeks into the other characters mind which i think was very brave because like i know some books do it like game of thrones i believe has like multiple multiple characters just like all throughout um but like sometimes this will do it within the same chapter which is very very rare to do in a book because most times people will find it confusing or jarring granted this book does a very good job of showing it because it will just flat out say like the character's name in like a bigger font and stuff so it's very obvious that you're switching perspectives but i do know that there would be a couple of times like if i'm reading like late at night or just not paying attention that I'll be like reading and going like, why does this sound weird? Like this character wasn't doing this. And then I'll be like, oh, cause it's not this character anymore. It's this character. But I thought that was just a really interesting dynamic to add to the book because like, it's always nice reading a book from like one character's perspective, but I think it's nice to read from other characters' perspectives because then you're not only getting like a biased opinion about the main character, but you're seeing the main character not only from their point of view, but from other characters' points of views. So you might think that you have like a flawless main character, but then like you're seeing into the mind of like his mortal enemy and then you're like realizing like, oh, maybe like he's not as perfect as I thought. He does have these flaws and things like that. So. I think that's a really interesting dynamic and it definitely made the book more interesting and enjoyable. Uh, my only flaw with the book that I found, and like maybe it's just me, um, but I felt the ending was a bit rushed. Um, like I like reread from like chapter 61 to the end just the other day and I feel like the main like battle and like the main conflict and like resolution all happened within the span of like two to three chapters at like the very end like it's probably more than that but it just seems so like rushed and compact and just like this small section of the book like the book is pretty big and I felt like this entire part like towards the very end was like the actual like like conflict so like it was definitely good like the lead-in was good like you understand why when you read it why it was built up the way that it was built up but i do feel like rainbow rowl could have just like milked it a bit more at the end um because i did feel that it was like a bit rush of like oh my god like one character finds out this and then the other character finds out this and then this happens and then this happens and then this happens and then like all of a sudden it's done and so that was kind of just like it was like whiplash like going back and forth and then you're just like oh it's it's done it's like a really quick roller coaster ride of just like except it only just kept going up up and then just like dropped and was done <laughs> um it was still really well written um like I liked it a lot, like the way that it was done. I just feel like it was a bit rushed. Like I felt like I'm like, it was like evenly paced throughout the book and then it got to the end and I felt like it was just like, oh, you're going for like a nice jog throughout like the entire thing. And then all of a sudden you just get sucker punched and then you go back to just a nice jog. So and that was like my one issue with the book. Other than that, I really enjoyed it. The plot was good. The humor was great. I respect Baz's humor on another level because it is very much like my own humor. It's very, like, it's kind of like that dry, sarcastic humor. And with, like, when he, like, uses his humor with Simon, who's just, like, this kind of, like, bright, bubbly kind of character, it's just very interesting to, like, see the dynamics of it work because they are very like opposite characters but when they work together it creates like a really good dynamic so I thought that was really really cool but yeah so I definitely recommend try this book out especially if you like magic if you like LGBTQ things um if you're just looking for a really nice fun read like it's not hard to get through like 
it looks like a lot, like there are lots of pages, but the chapters are really short, which I like because I'm the type of person who I like reading to the chapter and I won't put down a book until I'm like at a chapter ending. Um, so the chapters are really short, easy to get through, and the plot is just really, really good. I highly recommend. So yeah, definitely just like, this is the cover of this one. I know that there are multiple copies. Um, they even have like the map in the school, of the school. Um, I don't know. Okay. I know some of the books that Rainbow Rowell has, has like fan art and stuff. Um, which I think is really cool. It does not seem like this one does, but I know Fangirl, she has like actual like fan art of the characters and stuff on the inside of the book covers, which I just think is really, really cool and a nice way for like an author to kind of like acknowledge the fans work. But that's another thing about Rainbow Rowell that I love is she interacts so well with her fans. Like if you're a fan of any of her books, I say like, follow her on Twitter, follow her on Instagram, like, she interacts with her fans, like, I always geek out because she'll like a tweet if I tag her in it, and I'm always like, ah, ah. so, definitely, like, she is probably the best author I know who has, like, that good, like, fan interaction, she really does care about, like, the community, and I know she's been, like, having such a fun time teasing us all with the sequel, um, of Carry On, which is called Wayward Son. Yes, it's kind of a joke, um, in case any of you guys who are watching this are, like, old enough to know that song, um, but it's definitely, like, she's been having a fun time, like, dropping hints and teasing us, so I can't wait to read it, um, I'm gonna try to buy it as soon as physically possible and read it as soon as possible, and when I have, I will post another book note explaining that, but yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed, I hope you go out and read this book. If you have read this book, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of it, um, if you have any predictions for what the sequel is, don't give any spoilers if you're actually reading it already though, um, and like, no spoilers in the comment for this book, um, because spoilers are just... Um, but yeah, so, if you have a favorite character, let me know. Um, there are definitely characters I do not like in this book, but saying them would be spoilers. Um, but yeah, it's a great book. Highly, highly recommend. I cannot stop saying that because it is such a great book. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you guys read this book. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video. Love you. Bye.